How's it going, everybody? Um, I just watched a poetry vlog on the Pastory Time channel. I will try to remember to link it in the description, but between now and when the video goes up is so much time. I sometimes forget to do those things. So many things happen. Two days now, I've tried to take my recycling to the recycling center, and it has been closed on days that it's not supposed to be closed. So I have a car full of trash, and in a little bit, I'm going to try to take care of that. But anyway, so the poetry blog that um, Bert at Storytime did was super inspiring. What I try to do, no matter how I'm feeling, if I'm feeling um, down or just not into it, is that, um, and I think it was Sid Haig, the actor, who said this. And he might have said it a little bit differently, and I'm paraphrasing and turning it into my own thing. But um, it's to just create something every day, no matter what it is. Just create something every day. Whether that is writing a poem, whether that is taking a bunch of weird foods from your refrigerator and making a breakfast that you don't know if it will taste good or not, um, whether it's drawing a picture, um, cutting out bookmarks out of things, I do that. Um, you know, just always create. Like, I feel like um, <clears throat> I always compare myself to a mad scientist where it's like I always feel this like urge that I have to do something. I have to create something. I have to make something. And if I don't do it, I will go crazy. And so, like, when people ask, like, oh, what do you do? Like, I would feel probably more comfortable saying, oh, I'm a mad scientist. But that is crazy and um, not acceptable. And when I say I'm a writer um, or a poet or something, I always feel like like a cowering dog when I say those things. And I shouldn't feel that way. But again, if society would just let me say I'm a mad scientist, I would feel probably a hundred times better. So, um, yeah, it's something to think about. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, Bert made, um, he wrote a bunch of poems throughout the week and shared them, and um, I've done things like that before, usually how I do it is that I don't really talk about it, and I'll just like stream my screen while I'm writing, and um, I think what's lost there when I do that, again I haven't done that in a really long time, but I think what's lost there is the, um, the process. And, um, when I watched his video, I was inspired. And I don't think when I do the just streaming me typing, I don't know if that's inspiring. That just looks like, I don't want to say bragging, but it's just like, I don't know if anyone gets anything out of that. And, um, like, I just get what I normally get out of it because I'm just typing, you know? So, um, and I have a feeling Bert got a lot out of having to 
vocalize the things he was doing, and that probably really helped um, the process for him. So, um, and then he talked about um, this other booktuber named Sage, who he was inspired by to do that video. And I went and watched her video, and apparently she was inspired by Jen Campbell. So, um, I went, no, I didn't, I was gonna, and I'm like, you know what, I just want to make a video, I don't want to, like, keep, um, see, the thing that I have a problem with, Zoe, like, Zoe's an artist, she draws, she sculpts, she crochets, she, um, felts, she does all this amazing stuff. But she could do this stuff with things on in the background. And depending probably on how much caffeine I've had that day, I cannot do that. And for at least another week, we're in this trailer, all three of us, and um, plus two yippee dogs. So it's like borderline impossible for me to do anything when there's ruckus around. And right now it's still early enough that the squirrels aren't outside. I saw some desert iguanas. So it's just a matter of time before everything starts um, going crazy. But, um, so I wanted to do a video about um, just creating like I, I love it when people do challenges um, I'm a big fan of challenges and in fact we have the um, weird mask 500 this weekend um, and the funny thing is it was gonna be the 1500 but because of all the things that um, I'm gonna be doing and we're gonna be doing because we're moving um, I didn't think I had that much in me, so, um, we're knocking it down a little bit, and I'll do another video about that. It got me thinking about, like, what are my favorite poetry books, and some of you are gonna go, oh, well, it's Bukowski, so just whatever. If you would have asked me that, uh, yesterday, I would have said, no, you're wrong. But, um, this is, um, Skull, Skull Juices by Douglas Blazik, and it was a, a short run, um, it's a beautiful book, I love the, the paper, and the, it's got a little bit of a stain on the cover there. But this is from 1970. There weren't a ton of these made. And then on the inside drawing, like, those were all hand done and hand colored on each book. So, um, that was really cool. I think it actually says how many of these were made. Printed in an edition of a thousand copies, 50 copies, are in separate bindings and are signed by the poet. The title page is by Ron Cabin. So there you go. Um, so there were a thousand of these made. Um, and this was up until the second the best book of poetry I've ever read from front to back. There's tons of books that um, have great poems in them. And some clunkers. This one, um, I always thought was solid. Um, and I've read it a few times. And I got this probably about two years ago, I want to say now. Um, so you probably heard me talk about it if you followed the channel for that long. But um, I was reading through it trying to find some poems that 
I wanted to read to you to show how amazing uh, Blazik was. Blazik is still alive, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, but after... I can't remember what year it was. Somewhere in between 78 and 83. I can't remember what. Um, he changed his style and rewrote all of his poetry that was already out. Um, and rewrote it to a point that is, at least in my opinion, um, just very obtuse and doesn't have the same feel and intensity and desire and blood and everything that um, his early stuff had. And his early stuff is very hard to find. Um, you could find it, but it's expensive. Because, again, we're talking like 50 years old now. That's fucking crazy. And, um, a lot of this stuff wasn't printed in huge runs. Um, most of them were, I would guess, like, I think most, like, small press runs for things were in between two and five hundred. Um, but he also was the editor of Olay, which was a big, um, uh, literary little magazine, um, back in the day, <clears throat> but, um, I was reading through here, and, um, there is some, there are some great things in here, but I just don't think they're as good as I once did, and I think it's because of, um, where, where you are, and that's why I think it's so important to own poetry books, because you could read them depending on what time in your life it is. And a book won't mean that much to you. And then you could go back to it a year or two later. And um, all of a sudden it means the world to you. And it just like wrenches your heart to the point where you feel like if you don't even carry that book around with you everywhere you go. Like you're going to feel empty. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but then you go back to it, like I did with this, and realize, oh, I'm not feeling that as much anymore. So, um, it's very strange. Like, I would have, like, I would have fought a fucker if he would have said this wasn't the best poetry book in the world. <laughs> like, um... Yeah, and I was just going through it this morning, and I was like, there's still some great stuff in here, but it's not hurting my heart, you know? Like, there's sometimes you read something, and it pulls on you so hard that you feel like you wrote that. Like, you feel like that's your poem, and this is, like, yeah, Douglas Blazik wrote this, but this is me, he wrote this for me, and this is my epitaph, you know what I'm saying? And, um, then you read it again, and it's like, huh, that's okay. Say hi to Kurt. Hi. So, um, I am gonna read you, and so he's gonna be stoked because I found my Brighter Frankenstein bookmark. It was in my favorite poetry book. This is, um, questions on the night shift, answers in the soft air. Trapped into combat, like a cork in a tank muzzle, I drag my James Cagney Tommy gunned body out to the car on the way to work. I pass a thousand convertibles while a hunched seed of bitterness grows alongside the stubble of my wings. The oceans rise on beach-coiled lovers, the hills snare moons, 
great books are being written within fleshy tunnels, but as for me, my body is claimed for another eight hours, the why sandblasting my skull, and the answers straining in the universe to tell me, violet clouds of frozen waves of ash, the cracked and patched earthworm sidewalk, mud like excrement sloshed around by a giant pallet knife, tires eternally spinning beads on a crib, telephone wires strangling the air. My feet lift out of the Chevy as I groan a little, dying of old age in my twenties, claimed by the night shift, and when my back finally breaks, I'll know it wasn't from straw, but from answers. Is this the one I like? Yeah. Um, portrait of my neighbor as I watch him through the window. His spaghetti brains gag him like a thousand telephone wires, like a thousand tongues split down the middle, each half dangling, clucking, and spitting. He is puzzled by his being human. Human? Human? The word recalls the cold calamity of the dictionary, of an icicle of power lines fallen into peach trees. His hunched shoulders form a question mark. What is it like to be human? What is it like to smell the bacteria of life in your nostrils? What is it like to notice a flower and it looks more like a broom or the inside of a shopping bag? What is it like to be in one spot on one day and know that spot is where you are? What is it like to hold cold milk bottles and know what you're holding? What is it like to open the flap of a mailbox and suddenly stop when you notice the sun has become human and is messing you up, turning your blood to lava, turning your eyes into cherry juice, turning your body into a 50 million story building that shatters, flinging debris in every musty corner of the world. The one thing I don't like about this book now, going through it again, is how often he uses the same metaphors in poems. That really annoys me. Um, it's like there's so many out there, you know, like... I love the telephone wire strangling the sky. I think that's freaking brilliant. Um, but don't use that in multiple poems. Um, there was another one in there. Oh, um, turning your blood into lava. And I don't know if I read another one that had the lava in it. But it's just like there's tons of stuff, you know. But, um... I guess I will end that today. There's another one called Mother that, um, I'll just read it real quick. Hopefully I can do it without anything happening. <clears throat> My mother stopped by today, an agent, an aging lady of aspirins, and saw that I wasn't living right again, and that the drain makes noise when the water pump goes on. She brought a few clippings from a newspaper on how to raise children, how to fix ulcers, and how other people make more money. Her way of telling me what an ass I am. The bookcase doesn't quite look like a pile of National Geographics. The walls in the bedroom are flamingo, not beige. The hours I keep indicate a misfit. I ask her what's new and I'm told about another relative who died and that I must take better care of my health. I ask her how her car is running and she wants to know when I'm going to get the dents in mind fixed. Real fussy about rust and dirt and stuff as she eyes the dust clotted furniture as she eyes the dust clotted furniture. Before I can get her out the door, she asks me when I'm going to change my job, and I tell her when I die. 
which was asking for it. The next 20 minutes, I caught hell again. <sighs> Ain't that the truth, brother? Man. If I had a damn dollar for every time. <laughs> oh, anyway. So, this is a great book, but um, this was my favorite poetry book, and it's not now. So, I don't know what is. Um, so... Leave comments on this video um, and all my videos this week, and you will be entered into the drawing for my book, The End of Everything. And I will do that on the Sunday stream. And, yeah. So, um, I guess that's it. I hope this was helpful. Um, just keep creating, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.